G'day, it's me. Welcome back. Right, TD42 turbo diesel that patrol thingy. Uh, water tier intercooler kit. This um, kit bolts right up. Yeah, right. It's actually not a kit for this. It's a generic kit, so nothing's going to bolt right up. It all is going to take some tweaking and modifying and butcherizing and um, debauchery and all those other words that sound like that. Let's have a look at it. So you might, you might recognize this one. This is the one we put the snorkel on earlier on, which, again, that wasn't really a kit. Uh, it was a kit using the term very loosely. None of the parts were, well, I mean, the snorkel was, but uh, airbox and stuff weren't designed specifically to go into this vehicle as a bolt right up. But we got that done. Um, your filter's looking a little squishy in there. Never mind. So... Cold air in there, goes in the compressor roundy roundy thing, um, increases pressure and temperature and comes out of there hot. At the moment, just goes in there, it goes into the motor hot. No issue with detonation being a diesel, um, but colder is better, air density, blah blah blah, science and stuff. Colder, more power, more brim will go. So that's what we're at at the moment. And we've looked at, we've discussed various different things, making bits, buying bits, blah, blah, blah. Um, aftermarket kit, like I say, generic. That's on the bench. We'll have a look at that in a second. Inlet manifold, can buy, um, same guys that do all this stuff, trundles, can buy um, a kit. Or you can send your manifold in and get it done. Basically, they chop the top off it and put a different, fitting on here in a different place for your air intake and make it better uh, for what we are doing probably won't work out in the right spot for us we need this air intake which is actually it might be in the middle it doesn't look like it's in the middle it looks like it's that way we actually need it that way so we're going to do i'm going to do uh, custom top similar to what trundles make but different uh, we'll use a a Wiggins, Wiggins coupling from here in between here and the 90 degree into the intercooler which is on the bench so we'll go over there and I'll show you that so there we go um, if that looks familiar it should do it's very very similar to the one that just went into the march which has proven itself to be pretty good I'm not going to say freaking awesome but I'm going to say pretty good because it's not bad so this is a kit that comes with your front radiator that'll actually fit in the front of the patrol so that works gives you some hose so that's cool gives you a header tank which may or may not work you might chop this off and find a way to stick it on top of here because that'll be the highest point in the system I'll just see how things go there's a pump some fittings and stuff in there and, and the cap for on top of there of course the intima cooler the charge cooler the really really heavy but that's fine you know whatever um, sometimes it takes a bit of weight so three and a half inch in and out um, this is a three inch bend fits kind of fits in there all right three inches big enough flow for what we've got going on we've only got two and a half inch out of turbo so we can cut this down and we can stick this on we can even probably cut that a little bit not being too crazy with it and stick this on here and that takes care of our Length so we don't have to poke a hole through a firewall for that. Not that I would, but you know what I mean. Um, put that back on, stop the... Why was I going to say ostriches? Stop the ostriches going in there. Where did that come from, Glenn? Never mind. Uh, mount shop, two and a half inch to three and a half inch silicon joiner. So we'll take that side off and we'll put that side on there. And that'll go straight onto the turbo. So that side would be a piece of cake. And that'll give us any expansion, contraction, vibration, movement, etc. On one side, we'll hard mount this on top of the engine. And the other side will be Wiggins clamp into the inlet manifold. Of course, this whole arrangement will be lying on its side. Because it will not fit under the bonnet otherwise, obviously. Uh, we're going to have to put some tonk like that. Do we put it with this at the top? Don't think so, eh? Now we'll put it with that at the bottom. Hopefully the other side is not damaged. 
well, I mean it kind of is, but it's not bad. It's Chinese M, right? So it's never going to be perfect. It's got it's got hammer marks and stuff in it from brand new. But hey, that's you know you get what you pay for, right? So we'll um, I'll drill and tap into here very very carefully, and we'll put a couple of bleed screws to get the air out of the system. Unless I do what I was talking about earlier with this cobbled onto here somehow, which is probably not that difficult to do. Pretty easy. Okay, a uh, couple of things to do on the engine bay first. Let's have a look at that. So our cavity, our space for our intercooler is pretty good. Nice and huge, really big enough for the job, except this air conditioning pipe, which is out here in no man's land with some big long extensions on the brackets. So I'm going to take those off, make some different brackets and use some P-clamps and get this back that way. I'm going to say it's 40 millimeters. It'll be something like that. It gives us a bit more room to fit everything in. And uh, we'll double check the length of our two and a half inch to three and a half inch 90 degree silicon coupler. That's a mouthful, isn't it? And just make sure that we can actually do exactly what I'm thinking about doing without changing that in tank too much. Just like that. That's a mint. Customer will be happy with that. On to the next job. Yeah, nah. So. It's going to be pretty good, just checking just distances and all that sort of stuff. Done with the ruler, obviously, but uh, that'll do for now. All right, if that silicon coupler looks a little bit shorter than what it was before, that's because it is. The, bump the camera there, the, um, what are we going to call it? Outlet tube on the turbo needs to be shortened up. And while I'm at it, I reckon... Because I've got to take that off to do that safely anyway. Um, might be doing some debauchery here that might involve enabling us to get the silicon coupler down another 10 millimeters and still have good grip on everything going on there. As we are there, we're clear of all these tubes and everything, and the bonnet closes. But I'm pretty sure it's connecting with our um, hood liner. I guess we'll call that bonnet liner, the sound heat insulation thing, whatever. Uh, you can see some carnage there from the original. Remember, there was a joiner across the top here, and there were the clamps. These clamps were that side to the top, so they chewed into that. Um, pretty sure we're about the same height as that, so that's that's the thing going on there. Otherwise, not too bad. Um, We'll get on with that. We'll pull that turbo compressor off, fiddle with that, get us down a little bit more. That should be enough. We'll get the bonnet closed. And then um, we've got a Wiggins coupling on the way, and then we can start fiddling around once we know the height of that. Um, we can start fiddling around with that, chopping and changing and all that sort of carry on, which will be great fun. Here we go. One lower profile outlet. So I haven't welded that on yet. We'll weld it on the inside. Bzz, 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 bzz. Done. So while we're waiting for our Wiggins clamp, coupling, flanges, whatever, doofers between the blue bit and the grey bit there, um, to come from Auckland, which is a bit over an hour and a half's drive and usually takes a day, 24 hours, which is pretty... Never mind. Um, we'll get on with putting the intercooler radiator in here so pull the grill off gives us a decent amount of room taking the brace for the hood latch out of the way because that just basically ruled out anything working at all so that's gone i'll replace that with some aluminium stuff and things um can make some brackets this is the um the radiator so these mounts are going to go because they end up causing too much thickness um, and there's a drain bunk there or a port for something not sure why that's there that's got to go anyway because again adds thickness to us that we we just don't need uh, so that's got to go drain bung uh, that can stay it's not really so much of an issue had the obviously the grill was already off chomped out some stuff from the back of it made our little bracket here 
which is not finished so it'll get a couple of holes in it to help with the airflow without losing too much of its strength these things are notorious for overheating so putting something in front of the radiator is not such a good idea we'll probably move the horns um, because they can easily go somewhere else and that'll just help you know maybe a little bit um, not bad the grill does touch just down at the bottom but as you can see we're not far away from getting those all clicked in so down the bottom there oh, we're not going to be able to see it yeah I'm sure you can see right down that at the bottom is the part that's going to connect with our radiator it's not a big deal we can trim those pieces away and you're never going to see it. it's not going to change the strength of the grill appreciably so I'll do that and we'll have that almost fitted like I say we need a bracket on this side and we need another bracket at the bottom and might as well put one over the other side as well get it bomb proof yep so that's now good fit doesn't fit by much um pretty much impossible to see with the phone down there but it's a very very tight squeeze I would have preferred a marginally slimmer core would have been better um it'll do though we've got reasonable sort of flow there <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's great these grills with these big lines and them for styling uh, blocking off a bit of flow mm, if it was a race car and it was mine I'd probably drill some holes in those but it's not so we won't that'll do I've established that works that's not going to interfere with any brackets we're going to put on so let's get on with making brackets and a couple of hose holes in the frame there to get the hoses the hot and the cold in and out successfully destroyed that be no good for anyone ever again um basically oh here it is here basically chopped that out of it chomp chomp and replaced with that there um, not so much to make more horsepower but just to actually get the air from the intercooler into the manifold obviously this is a three inch I was looking at using three and a half originally but it was just getting silly um, three inch tube and that simply wasn't going to fit on there and that that was the center line of it there it wasn't going to work so we've done that um, folded this piece here and shrunk it in the middle there to get the curve on it to reduce the amount of welding that was done yeah I possibly could have done that for both sides folded here folded here and shrunk both sides a lot of hard work probably too much work for this poor little thing and with clearances and stuff I don't know whether it physically would have fitted in the machine um, the other option could have been cut this here um, through here things is getting a big hole in it anyway it wasn't going to make a heck of a lot of difference cut a couple of sections out of here and then that piece would fold around but that's fine what I've done is good it's um, I don't know reasonable sort of welding they should be happy with that it looks it'll look all right when it's in the truck anyway so let's go put it back and see what else we need oh let's wait i know we need an earth tab somewhere along here with an e mount by 1.25 hole um definitely need that so i'll do that before i try it and of course to ensure the face is true trust Trusty. That's not the right word to use for this. The sometimes goes without breaking milling machine. Um, sorting that out. Of course, it doesn't quite have the stroke or the length of the bed that we need, but it was enough that we can get this all within like 0.1 of a millimeter or better. I just have to tidy up a little bit of the edit. It doesn't quite reach, but that's fine. We can do that with um, with that. That'll be fine for what we're doing. The old blue tack test. Blue tack on top of the intercooler, close the bonnet. Yeah, excess clearance is definitely not going to be an issue with this. It's got look, minimal clearance. I'm going to say basically none. That hood liner, which you can see is munted from rubbing against those hose clamps I mentioned earlier. 
um, it definitely hits that. I don't think the bonnet will, just the hood liner. So we can chop a hole in it if he wants. I'll talk to the owner about that. It's not like it's in fantastic condition anyway. Uh, it's not bad as far as the age of the vehicle. A carefully cut hole just to suit that highest edge towards the front there won't do any harm. Or we'll just leave it rubbing and it'll just make a bit of an ugly patch on top of it, but it won't, won't hurt anything. Um, certainly not going to leave my blue tack there. Right, so I need to make a mount for the back. I've got a piece of wood jammed under there. You can't even see it. Mm, yeah, yeah, you might be able to see it there. It's um, just setting the back of it at a reasonable height. So now I'm going to try and catch. Can we see it? Yes, that engine lifting hook. I'm going to put a couple of penny washers on that and um, put a mount on the back of this, which will be a sod to get to, but that's the way it is. I need to do something a bit custom like this. Not always easy. Mounting boss all sorted. Um, magic gold foil, engine side, turbine side, exhaust side, turbo side. The bit where it's hot, right? So that'll do. This side here, I'm not going to bother with that. It's on the cold side of the motor anyway. And it should be not too bad for temperatures in this particular vehicle. But we'll see. Um, ideally, two bolts would be better here. And stop that twisting moment. Due to the location, difficulty, making sure everything's square and all that sort of carry on. I'm just going to go for the one with the lock washer and all that sort of carry on. These are not going to allow that particular point to move very much anyway there's so much leverage going on there that's just going to hold it pretty steady if he has problems with it we'll stick another boss underneath it figure out where it needs to be drill holes and stuff that's going to be really hard to get it exactly right because uh, we've got this much room behind the intercooler so that's why it's like that at the moment fast running out of day so this is mm, done hot cold pump into there out of here it needs to go in and out of this and i need this as high as possible and we can't go any higher than where we are with the intercooler because we hit the bonnet so i could maybe try and put it over here somewhere there's actually heaps of eyes but this is all the hot side of the engine bay right and that's that's not ideal um, and there's not much room over here so I'm thinking this is going to get the chop and get completely reconfigured so that it can go here and actually have the fittings going the right way right direction for what we're doing because they don't at the moment you want out at the bottom and at the top and to have it pointing in the general direction of where we want to go, it's backwards to that. So, choppy choppy time. Um, that's all done. I've done my bracket and everything. I'm not sure if you can see it. You can see it. It's kind of in the middle of the screen there. Don't have hose clamps for that one. Got to get those. Otherwise, that's pretty much sorted. Looks good with its gold foil in appropriate places. Sorted. Test run. Haven't driven it. Just run it up in the garage here and it's okay. I've shortchanged myself. One critical piece of tube. We need to overflow from here to somewhere. The sensible place to put it will be in the radiator overflow there. As I suspected, she's quite a, look, they're not the smoothest engine in the world, right? So there's a bit of movement here. These are giving good flex to stop any major issues in the mount at the back's fine it's not moving around anywhere at the back there so um the customer's gonna go come and grab it in a little bit and i guess we'll take it for a drive and see how it goes see if it, he reckons it's going any better or not it might do with a bigger pipe into the manifold there less restriction slightly larger plenum on the manifold than it had before it may go better you measure it on the dyno probably never feel it with your bum in the driver's seat so there we go very good like share subscribe and catch us later see you bye